Hello. <laughs> Welcome to a, another episode. <laughs> I feel so weird saying that. Welcome to another YouTube video about my favorite fantasy characters and what we can learn from them. Today we're going to be talking about one of my ultimate, ultimate favorite fantasy characters. His name, you'll probably know it, is Raistlin Majere. Raistlin Majir. I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but anyway, his name is Raistlin, and he's from the Dragonlance series, from the original Dragonlance books. So Raistlin appears in a whole bunch of Dragonlance, Dragonlance books written by um, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. He's an epic, incredibly complex character. He's powerful and to do his full story justice would take a lot longer episode than this. <laughs> so to get it all in, I'm going to be focusing focusing on Raistlin in the Dragonlance Chronicles as well as the Dragonlance Legends and the War of the Lands trilogies. Uh, yeah, so those are the main books that he features in, even though he features in a whole bunch of Dragonlance series books. There are three reasons why I love Raistlin so much. And the first one is because he is so incredibly complex as a character. So nuanced, so deep, so so multifaceted as a character that it's almost impossible to be amazed by the writers for creating such a deep character. And I think the the thing that most intrigues me about him is that he is both a protagonist and an antagonist. And I don't think he's an anti-hero. I think that he sways more to the side of the villain or the um the antagonist both. But it's but the, then you get these brief glimpses of him as the hero where he saves the world literally on 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 a few occasions and it just makes you think Wow, how deep is this human? Another thing I like about Raistlin is his incredible, incredible rise to power. It's such a fraught, extended journey through so many difficult sacrifices and ups and downs that, and then eventually he arrives at becoming the one of the single most evil powerful beings in the entire world that is the dra that is in the Dragonlance series in the world of Kryn and it's just it's such an interesting journey because he goes from being this frail weak power hungry young man to being this still frail but incredibly strong complex powerful thing force of nature evil incarnate and it's just so wonderful to watch that rise the the last thing the third thing that i love so much about Raistlin is that he was so frail and so weak and despite the fact that he rose to such power in dark magic he became such an evil force he never stopped feeling like he was a weakling he never got over his own self insecurities and what those insecurities led him to do was to protect other people or to protect other beings that were weak and frail and I think that really shows his humanity and it's why I love it is that no matter how evil he got and no matter how powerful he got he would protect those that he perceived weaker than him and it was actually, there were some seriously beautiful moments where this dark, evil asshole does something for some, someone weaker than him. And it just makes you feel the humanity in such a real way. So let's unpack a little bit of Raceland's story. Raceland is one of a pair of twins. He is the weaker, more sickly of the two twins, but he is also the smarter. He has an incredible intellect. And it's this intellect that gets him recognized by a traveling mage. In fact, an arch mage, an arch magus of the white robes. And being recognized by this arch magus sets him on his path towards becoming a mage himself. Raistlin embarks on a journey with his twin brother Caramon 
as well as a set of other heroes who are called the Heroes of the Lance. Along their journey, there are a lot of difficulties, and in, at several points, Raithan uses his powers, his learned magics and spells, to help them overcome darknesses and to help them in their battle against the dark goddess called Tuckasus. After many missions to stop the dark goddess Tuckasus, Raistin comes across the library of Palanthus. Here, he is dying. However, he doesn't die. He pledges himself to the dark goddess, Tuckasus, and to the god of evil magic called Nuatari. He becomes an archmagus of the Black Robes. He returns to his friends and he helps them defeat the dark goddess and he helps them defeat the, the general of the dark goddess's armies. And in so doing, he removes the only two forces that are strong enough to stand in his way, effectively becoming the most powerful evil magic in the whole of the world. The first thing that we can learn from Raistan, and I'm going to read you a quote from Tracy Hickman, one of the authors of the, the Dragonlance series, his rasping voice his sarcasm and bitterness, all masking an arrogance and power that never needed to be stated, suddenly were real. I think what this quote encapsulates was that Raistlin wasn't a nice person. He was mean, he was sarcastic, he was arrogant, but he had two redeeming qualities and one of those was that he keeps his word, and the other was that he protects the underdog. So that quote was from, was something that Tracy thought, that Hickman thought about Raistlin. But as you read the books, you start to understand that Raistlin, as much of a dickhead as he is, and he can be really, really fucking nasty, you come to understand that fine, he's an, he's an asshole, he's the evil character, but there are some things that he will always do, and that is, he will keep his word and he will protect the underdog. What we can learn from this is that your main character doesn't have to be the good guy, and yes, there is a there is a, a, a basic plot and, and an archetype called the anti-hero, but I'm talking about going even beyond that. So the anti-hero is often more redeemable than the antagonist. But what about creating a story around the antagonist? There are several examples in pop culture and in fantasy writing where this is done, but it, it's a lot less explored than the typical hero or anti-hero archetype. So I think the thing that Rayson teaches us the most is that you can do something with a character that doesn't involve them saving the day. Sometimes it can involve them wanting to become the most powerful force in the world. And I think it's that motivational characteristic that makes Raistlin such an interesting character. For the second thing that we can learn from Raistlin, I have another quote from the author, uh, from one of the authors, Tracy Hickman. The quote goes, people can identify with Raistlin. We can relate to feelings that nobody loves us, to the struggle for recognition and acceptance. <laughs> this is something that I relate to so much. And uh, uh, so we've already touched on about how Raistlin is a bit of an asshole, a bit of. Raistlin's a fucking asshole. He's not a nice guy, but what that makes us realize is that he's a massively flawed character. And I think the thing that instead of making us hate him because he's so flawed, I think the thing that the authors get right is explaining through his backstory and through his actions why he's such an asshole. Underlying everything Rayston does, everything, whether it's nastiness or kindness or honorability or completely fucking everyone over, there's a core motivation. And that core motivation is that he wants 
to be important. He wants to be recognized. He wants to matter. Throughout his life, Raceland was weak. He was downtrodden. He was bullied by everyone. He lived in the shadows of his beautiful, physically able, strong brother, Caramon. And everyone loved his brother, but because Raistin was so weak and because his weakness made him feel bitter and because his intelligence made him a lot sharper tongued, nobody liked him. And it was incredibly difficult for Raistin to be ignored and be overlooked consistently throughout his entire life. He's not just mean for the hell of it. He uses his, he, Raistlin uses his intellect in a way that shields himself from having to care or from having to allow people care for him. It helps him make, he uses his intellect to help make himself feel powerful and feel important. Something that no one else has ever made him feel. His strengths comes from a place of pain. The thing we can learn from this is that personalities are so, so multi-layered. And just because someone is presenting as an asshole doesn't mean that that is who they are on an intrinsic level nor on a motivational level. So the learning is to give your character layered personalities. And the way you can do this is by establishing what their core motivational factors are which are, are the deeper are the deeper personalities are, are the deeper motivating factors then give them a surface personality which is what presents and then that surface personality give a, a, a above that surface personality give them a way of behavior and that really think about how that core motivation can create that surface personality and how that surface personality can make the character behave in very specific ways. And if you think it through carefully, there's a whole lot of interesting ways that this can pan out. And that, and that isn't necessarily A, B, C, E, but can be A, Z, M. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. If you don't ask me in the comments, I'll, I'll, I'll type it out. It'll make more sense. <laughs> Raistlin is powerful. He uh, is in his in the world of Kryn, in the world of the Dragonlance series. He is one of the ultimate evil powers. He he even becomes close to being a god at one point. Incredibly powerful. The things that he can do with his magic, they involve time. They involve changing reality. They involve shifting actual gravitational forces they involve changing things from one thing to another on an epic scale but that's not what makes him so interesting what makes it interesting is how he got there and what makes it so much more satisfying when he uses his ultimate powers is that you know that he paid for them that it was incredibly difficult for him to get those powers and now that he has them maybe maybe it wasn't worth it or maybe it was but the sacrifices were insane the learning that we can get from this is that the journey to power is more interesting than the ultimate power itself we're fantasy authors we're not writing video games although i love my video pc mac games Xbox, whatever, but it's, the power is great, yes, but how they get that power is even better. I want to know how they got it, because once I know how they got it, and then when I see them use it, ah, uh, that is like the ultimate, because then I know that that power was worth it, and it wasn't just given to them. Let's do a summary of what we can learn from Raceland. Number one, your main character doesn't have to be the good guy. And he doesn't even have to be the anti-hero. Your main character can be the bad guy. Number two, give your character 
a layered personality that includes a core motivation, a surface personality, and a way of behavior that are all interconnected in ways that aren't what people typically expect. Number three, the journey to gaining power is more interesting than the power itself. And that's it for this episode of favorite fantasy characters and what we can learn from them. I hope you enjoyed it. Raistlin is one of the most important characters in my life. In fact, he's influenced me immensely. And if you like what I've said, or if you don't, drop a comment. Please hit subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram. All right. Thanks. <laughs>